And welcome back here on News 19 at 7. Our political insiders are with us now. Antoine C. Wright, Democratic strategist. Dave Wilson, our Republican strategist. Not a lot going on with the State House, so we thought we would take this week to focus on the upcoming June 12th primary, specifically looking at the race for governor. Things are beginning to heat up on both sides. Democrats and Republicans alike meeting to discuss the issues. We have been in this countdown for well over a year. We are at three and a half weeks left, JR. And polling numbers that are coming back right now, we are seeing that at least 50 to 60 percent of the electorate, the people who are going to be going to the polls, have not made decisions on some key races on both the Republican and Democratic side. Well, here's what I can tell you. People have not been paying attention. The national news has literally sucked the life and the energy out of so many people until local politics is a blur to a lot of people. So that's challenging for the candidates. So the candidates who will be most successful, in my opinion, are the ones who can get a message out the quickest and the farthest. And the way you do that is by raising money. Do you think a lot of people know there have been gubernatorial debates out there? already on both sides? I think the average person on the street do not because most people don't make their decisions based on a debate. I mean, it's more about personality, it's more about mail, it's more about what leaders think in their community. It is not about debate. If you take a look right now, let's just take the 4th the Congressional District race that's going on in the upstate or the gubernatorial race. The argument points that people are making, the issues that have polled and they're doing, their, there is not that much of a difference, I'll tell you right now, on the Republican side between crazy candidates. Crazy and crazy. Well, <laughs> I knew you were going there today, but there's not that much of a difference between candidates. So it really boils down to, is this somebody I can trust? Is this somebody who I want to have my faith in from at least a political standpoint? And there are a lot of people right now who are backing off going, eh, I just, I don't know yet. I can just tell you, on the Democratic side, most people will take recommendations. Some will do their research, but a lot of people will take recommendations from people who are inside the political bubble. My mother, my aunt, my sister who are watching, I know they're going to come to me and say, who is the better candidate? And I'm going to give them sound advice that I think is the better candidate because people have just been consumed with national stuff to the local stuff haven't touched them as much. I know folks running against Governor McMaster making a big deal saying he hasn't showed up for any Republican debates and Democrats <coughs> jumping on this as well. The governor is saying he is going to participate, but in the two b debates that are sanctioned by the Republican Party. Is that right, Dave? That is that is exactly what he's going to be doing. And the thing about that is this is a place where Henry McMaster has nothing to gain necessarily for non-sanctioned debates and stuff to lose. Right. I wouldn't say everything to lose, but he does have something to lose. That's right. If Because here's the thing about it. You go to a debate, you're standing in front of a camera like this. You're having to make statements, and guess what? Every single one of those statements that you make, no matter what it is, is going to get nitpicked, it's going to be broken down, it's going to be used. And so he's like, listen, let's talk about the debates that we're going to have. I'm going to do with the Republican debates and let it go. I mean, but you've got like James Smith, who didn't even show up for the one that uh, the NBC affiliate up in Greenville was responsible for it from a and university. It's fun to hear Dave be critical, 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 hypocritical tonight because here's the deal. That was not a sanctioned NCDP debate. And as I told you before, and I'll say this again, people at debates, there are, there are several people who go to debates, people who've already made their mind up, people who know where they're leaning, and staff and supporters of people who are already there. So right. in, 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 in a no, real way, exa debates exactly don't what matter. Yeah, exactly. Debates really yeah. don't matter as much. So I think because it's a throw the bums out type of environment, it's pretty smart for Henry not to go because it's, 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 it's well, in his political they, best What they're doing is they're calling this building back behind us now. This is the Columbia Swamp. So everybody's trying to drain, if it's the swamp in Washington or if it's the swamp over there on Gervais Street, everybody's trying to fight against the incumbencies that are there, whether it's somebody who's already in office or somebody who's been in office. And so there's a lot of that going back and forth. But the advantage for Henry is that he is the front runner. Every poll have seen that, yeah. have shown that he's the front runner. So he has more to lose, as you said, by showing up and answering the question the wrong way instead of not showing up right. and letting people assume versus showing up at a sanctioned debate where there's what? two and then he can change the narrative because he leads in the money race as well. Right. So you take a look at the, at the, the people who you're seeing on the screen right now. These Republicans, they had a debate in Charleston last night. Four of them showed up. They, the four, same four were in Greenville. Uh, earlier in the week. And the thing about it is they're all wanting to start pushing forward and this is the place the place and the time for them to be able to get a message out that they're not getting out. And right they're now. all running as outsiders right. against Henry. Right. Right. So <laughs> the polls are showing on the Republican side that McMaster is, is uh, leading there and James Smith perhaps has a, a little bit of an edge in the 
Democratic uh, primary. Do we see one or the other winning an outright majority in three weeks or not? I, I think it would be tough, be simple math, because there's so many undecided voters on both sides. Yeah, I would and agree And undecided that. voters are literally going to decide whether there's a runoff or not. I think what will, de what will be determined is how far they are leading going into the runoff. And I think the other part about it is this. You're going to see a higher level of turnout most likely in this race, you're looking at 25 to 28 percent voter turnout is expected right now in this race. And if you take a look at where the voter base is, let's just take Greenville and Spartanburg counties alone for the Republican side. That's 30 percent of the Republican primary vote in those two counties alone. And that's where a lot of attention and focus is being placed. So, so I'll disagree with Dave a little bit. We will not see presidential preference primary turnout in this race. It never happens in midterm primaries, but we will see probably more higher than normal turnout and in special places where the other contested races. In Kershaw County, there's a sheriff's race on the ballot. On the Republican side, you'll see higher turnout. In Richland County, there's a solicitor's race. In other races on the ballot, you'll see higher turnout. In the 4th the, the, Congressional yeah. District in the upstate, right. Charleston, you'll see higher turnout in those places. All right. Well, we're going to have to leave it at that, and we can talk about this in the weeks ahead. We have a little more than three and a half weeks before the June 12th primary. Antoine C. Wright, Dave Wilson, thank you so very Thanks, much. Thanks, JR. And stay with us. South Carolina's weatherman Jim Gandy has a look at your forecast when we come back.